And thank you for joining me today for this unorthodox State of the City. 2020 will always be known as the year of COVID-19. I look forward to the day that we can take our masks off and put COVID behind us. We all know what a toll it continues to take on our lives, our families, and our businesses. Some much more than others, losing loved ones or knowing friends who have. As of yesterday, we have lost 95 of our Marlboro neighbors. We started immediately having discussions with local and state health professionals, our emergency team, and daily calls with the Marlboro Hospital that has done an amazing job in supporting us through this, gathering information to determine what precautions should be taken and how quickly. Our health department, led by John Garside, has done a fantastic job working tirelessly with state officials, Marlboro Hospital, testing facilities, pharmacies, and keeping abreast of the daily and weekly changes. They've transformed their office to support prioritize COVID initiatives. The pandemic has caused the city to change the way it does business. With City Hall and other municipal buildings open for appointment only, our employees have stepped up to the plate and have done a great job in giving us the extra effort. We have encouraged you to pay bills online when possible. We install drop boxes in the front and rear of City Hall where you can leave bill payments, permit requests, or other city business that you would be coming in to drop off. All offices are and have been fully staffed to answer any questions you have by phone. And we announced a new non-emergency phone number available 24-7 for general information. All city committee meetings are now virtual and are recorded, and they are available to you to watch anytime on our city's website. With our first responders and healthcare workers receiving the first vaccines over the past couple of weeks, we are hopeful that the state will start providing the needed vaccines to move forward as fast as possible for our over 75 years of age population, which will be starting any day. Again, based on the availability from the state, we have a plan and an infrastructure in place to move quickly. We have partnered with Marlboro Hospital and Bouvier Pharmacy to roll this out as quickly as possible. Please keep in mind the state determines who and when we vaccinate. Community collaboration will continue to help us get through this tough time. And I want to thank all of you for your patience and understanding. Much of this is out of our control. I want to thank the City Council for all their support in expediting decisions and helping make this happen. Despite 2020's challenges, I can tell you the City of Marlboro is still operating at its highest level. I'd like to highlight some of the accomplishments over the past year and share what's in store for 2021. Our IT department has deployed new equipment and continues to monitor the required virtual landscape for all meetings. This allows the public to be part of the process and listen or watch all public meetings using technology from home. Over the course of 2020, the Marlboro Fire Department hired six new firefighters and heads up our emergency response team. Our police department has passed the reaccreditation process and the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission ratified the designation for another three year period. The Marlboro Police Department is one of only 94 accredited departments in the entire state and has been since 2017. The city has hired four new officers who graduated from the police academy in December 2020. In addition, our investments have included the purchase of four new police cruisers and two new mountain bikes for our community policing officers. We hired two new department heads, Sean Duvall, filling the big shoes of John Galoni, who started a well-deserved retirement in 2020 officially took over as the city's new DPW commissioner in October. 
His career included stents working for the towns of Concord and Oxford, as well as several years in the private sector. Patrick Jones, our new finance director, also began in October and began with a fresh set of eyes from the private sector. In a short period of time, he's already made plans to implement new ideas to make his department run more efficiently. Once again, I'm proud that we have maintained our triple, bond rate, triple A bond rating for the second consecutive year. This allows the city to borrow at a lower interest rate that ultimately saves you, our taxpayers, money. Marlboro is one of only a few AAA communities in the Commonwealth. In September, we opened our first new school in decades, the Goodnow Brothers Elementary School, which cost $56 million, over $11 million on the budget. We look forward to the proper grand opening soon. Many of you have asked for a tour, and when the time is right, we will make that happen. Superintendent Bergeron has had the task of trying to get students back into the classroom, keeping staff and students safe. It's been a delicate balance between converting from remote to hybrid learning and back again. Quarantining and answering daily and internal and external concerns. It's been no easy feat, but he has done an exceptional job. The school cafeteria workers could not have done a better job over the past year. Superintendent Bergeron put a plan in place. And although at the past city council meeting, Councilor Orham thanked them for their preparing 65,000 meals. At this point, they have actually prepared over 325,000 meals for our students and their families, our seniors and residents of our public housing. On behalf of the city of Marlboro, a big thank you goes out to them. We are con continuing our efforts on sustainability and green initiatives as outlined in the city's sustainability action plan. The plan completed several years ago is now being updated. This past fall, we completed our LED street lighting retrofit project that replaced 2,711 street lights, reducing our projected 800,000 kilowatts for the annual savings of $80,000 through National Grid's Energy Efficiency Program. These lights use less energy and last much longer. Currently, 60% of the city's municipal electricity is purchased through solar net metering agreements. This spring, we will begin a citywide solar initiation. We will be installing solar panels on four schools, including the new elementary school, to be completed this year. We anticipate we will be at 80% renewable energy after these installations. In addition to solar power, we completed the upgrade of the HVAC system in City Hall and plan to continue with additional upgrades in municipal buildings for more efficiency and energy savings. Additional light efficiency upgrades are planned at the schools, transfer station, and the water treatment plant for 2021. We will be installing two electric vehicle charging stations uh, in addition at the parking garage an additional four at the install will be installed at the municipal parking lot on Bolton Street. The city currently has five electric vehicles and several hybrids. We will continue to purchase these while our fleet ages out. I want to commend our aggregation committee, chaired by President Ossing, on securing a 41-month program for our Community Choice Power Supply Program. This enables the residents to get a fixed rate of just over nine cents per kilowatt versus the national grid's basic rate of over 12 cents per kilowatt. Since November 2019, the city residents have saved over $1.7 million on their individual electric bills. Being an active member of the Massachusetts Municipal Association, where we share ideas with other communities, has really enlightened my awareness on how much we've been able to accomplish in these areas 
compared to nearly any other community in the state. Investments continue as the city is updoing, upgrading with a $7 million renovation project at Pleasant Street Public Housing Facility. The renovations are underway and residents will be moving back to Building A this spring while we begin construction in Building C and B. The city received another community development block grant for $800,000 that will be used to replace the roof at 240 Main Street, provide housing rehab grants for single family homes, and substance abuse prevention programming for the youth services at the Boys and Girls Club. One of the more frequent questions I get asked from residents, when will you be repaving my street? I'm happy to report in 2020, our DPW department repaired miles of city roadways, added new sidewalks, and installed thousands of feet of water and sewer lines. In addition, they have completed phase three of the lead service replacement project and will start with the final phase this spring. I invite everyone to visit the city's homepage and view the capital projects link to see the ongoing investments we are making to improve roadways around the city. We will continue our road work in 2021, and it will be another busy spring for road construction this year. This past summer, when reopening costs overburdened our restaurants and small businesses, the Marlboro Economic Development Corporation launched the Small Business Relief Grant Program assisting 33 small businesses with grants totaling $130,000. Funds were utilized to assist with outdoor dining, the purchasing of personal protective equipment, and other reopening costs. To help the restaurant community, the license board stepped up to the plate, helped expedite their process, and helped expand outdoor dining quickly after the state rolled back its restrictions. Additionally, the MEDC continued a partnership with Scampton Gourmet, giving Marlboro restaurants unique promotional opportunities, such as the Virtual Taste of Marlboro, which reached over 23,000 people on Facebook alone. Although the Daily News reports the high unemployment rate, I can tell you here in Marlboro, our employers are hiring. I don't recall a time when we had employers contact the mayor's office to help in filling their staffing needs, but they are doing so now. Check out the Marlboro Economic Development Corporation website for job openings at many of our local businesses. Employees continue to be attracted to our community for the access of major roadways, our talent pool, cost of doing business, assistance in getting through the municipal process, and many amenities that Marlboro has to offer. Most recently, Sartorius, a leading international life science and research company, announced plans to come to the city. They anticipate creating 100 new jobs, enhancing a job creation and expanding our tax base. In November, the city council approved a TIF, another life science company planning to invest $115 million in Marlboro, building a new manufacturing facility at the campus. Revance Therapeutics, currently based in California, will expand their operations here in Marlboro, bringing 76 new jobs to our city. Further solidifying our reputation is a life science hub in the Commonwealth. We started to make real progress connecting the big companies in our community to the students in our schools. Quest Diagnostics participated in a live streaming event it was integrated into a virtual learning, giving our students an inside look at a Marlboro company right here that is in the front lines fighting the pandemic each and every day. We began to work on renovating the French Hill neighborhood. In 2019, the city received a MassWorks grant to provide infrastructure improvements and upgrades along Lincoln Street, from Broad Street down to the Acevit Rail Trail. This is a multi-year project encompassing community planning, parking study, and acquisition of key sites. 
Although we put, had put a pause on spending and capital projects, I look forward to getting the library project moving forward in the next couple of months, moving them to their temporary home at the Walker Building and starting construction. I also look forward to working with the City Council on starting the public process on identifying a location for the West Side Fire Station and purchase the necessary land. Over the next couple of months, I will be announcing a city foundation. This perpetual foundation will initially fundraise to help our city students get the specific training for the employee our public school system does not have the resources to provide. It will continue in assessing and raising the needed funds to support the library toward their $2.5 million goal. More on that soon. In short, while we recognize and strive to improve services in the way we conduct our business, we have a lot going for us here. Marlboro continues to build on its strong foundation due to the partnership with the City Council, School Committee, and working collaboration between City Departments and numerous civic and business leaders. I want to thank all of you who have been a part of and continue to be a part of Marlboro's continued success. I look forward to getting students back to school, all residents and businesses back to work, and get back to being as normal as possible. Thank you all for your time. May God bless the city of Marlboro and the United States of America. Thank you.